everyone, Jamie Madison here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be playing with the Honey Bee Stamps. This is the Cosmo um, Flowers. So Cosmo is actually a kind of flower. Um, I didn't know that. I'm not familiar with um, names of flowers. But so this one is the Cosmos and they usually I believe are um, yellow flowers. I did mine pink. Um, I've seen other people do pinks, yellows, blues, whatever color you want to do your flower. So I'm going in with my Simon Says Stamp um, black ink. This ink I'm not too impressed with, I hate to say. I keep using it hoping that it's going to get better. The only thing that is good is it doesn't smear on my um, Bristol Smooth Paper, but my ink pad feels super dry. I hardly can get any of my stamps to actually stamp not only the first time, the second time, third time. Sometimes it even takes four times for me to finally get, you know, a clear, good stamp um, image. And with the VersaMark, um, and with the VersaFine, I never had that issue. So that is the only thing that I am struggling with right now with this ink. I love um, how it dries quickly and it doesn't smear on my paper, but I almost would rather heat, do through the whole heat embossing than have to stamp my image three to four times just to get a clear image that very that frustrates me and then sometimes I get these dark splotches around the edges of my stamps as well almost like the ink pooled up there but there's hardly any ink on my ink pad that's why it's not stamping right I don't I don't know what the issue is with the stamp pad I don't I keep trying um, but every time I use it, it it just frustrates me so I might be trying that Gina K ink so as you see, I'm, I went ahead and stamped out some of my flowers and then I used some of my masking roll and stamped those out so I had some mask for these flowers. But as you see, I'm even trying to do my stamps. It's still, you know, every time I go to use it, my flowers um, or any image that I'm doing, it just does not want to stamp clearly. It was just missing, you know parts of my stamp and I've used the stamp and this isn't the first time I use the stamp so the stamp has already been uh, conditioned so that's not an issue and I do condition my stamps before I, I use them as well I don't just pull them straight out and start stamping on them so um, I went ahead and masked off my flowers as I'm going I'm trying to do like a bouquet of flowers with um, a center um, being empty so I can put my sentiment in the center but tell me if you guys use the Simon Says Stamp ink and how you guys are liking it and if you're having any issues with it like I am. So I went ahead and removed my masking um, and then I want to go ahead and start my watercoloring. I will have the watercolor listed at the left hand corner um, like I always do in my video so you know what colors I'm using when I'm using them. So right now I am using the 149 and this is in bubblegum pink and I'm just going very lightly. I, I didn't want these flowers to be super dark so I only end up using uh, four colors for all these flowers. I was able to you know build with the Arteza markers as well that's the reason why I absolutely love these markers is they're really easy to blend out as long as you're using the right paper so I'm just going through and I'm pretty much just I'm um, coloring where curves and stuff of my flowers are Sorry, I hope you can't hear my dog snoring in the background we have a dog situation going on in my house um, we are kind of fostering a dog at the moment and then I also have my two dogs as well we haven't decided if we are going to um, keep him or not. I will let you guys know um, here in a couple of weeks what we decide to do. But so far we have named him Max. And um, he's a sweetheart. He's a big old baby. He's about, I would say he's a little bit over a year old. So I'll tell you guys more on his story once we get a little bit further along with how everything's going. And my house is just chaotic all the time right now so my two dogs they are eight years old and they are in that stage of their life where they just want to be left alone and you have a big puppy that's bigger than them um, my dogs is a Dalmatian pit bull and a pointer pit bull I've talked about them a little bit before but a little bit of a story with my Dalmatian pit bull I did leave it on my blog as well but um, she had her knee replaced last year she tore both of her ACLs um, within a week of each other and that's usually how it ends up going when a dog tears their ACL they end up tearing the next one very soon because they're using the other leg um, for more support which puts more pressure on their joints 
So we end up having her one knee replaced because you can only do one at a time is, is best for the dog because it's really hard for them to walk as is. So we had the one knee replaced and while that's a six to eight month healing process, um, her other knee ended up healing pretty much on its own. The way that works is the body is amazing. It um, makes its own scar tissue, which acts as a little bit of an attendant as well. So it kind of keeps the knee together with the scar tissue. So we could have another surgery done on her other knee um, if it starts giving her issues again. But as of now, she's able to run and walk. Um, well, kind of run. She kind of hobbles when she runs because her knees just don't bend like they used to. So with her having um, that massive surgery done, she does not want a puppy around her or jumping on her, especially one that is bigger than her. She is, she's around 70 pounds, so she's a big dog herself. Um, but this new dog, he is a lot taller than her and he is, like I said, a year and a half maybe old. We're not sure on how old he is, but he is very big and he wants to play. So we've been having a little of a learning curve with him and with our dogs to try and get used to him. Thankfully, our dogs are very well behaved. They don't bite or act out too much. A couple of growls here and there, but nothing too crazy. So back on to my coloring, sorry. <laughs> Lots of stuff going on in the household. So what I did was with the 149, the first color we used, I colored in the um, the three flowers with that color. And then I went in with my 149 and did two of the color, the two of the flowers with that color, and that is the bubblegum pink. And then my third color, I went in with what my 183, and that is blush red. And I did um, those three flowers with it. So um, I kind of tiered them differently so they weren't all the same in one area. And then my last color was my rogue pink and that's 190 and I used that for my accent color to give um, a few of the other flowers some deeper colors towards the blooms. Now for the pollen, I didn't actually go in with a yellow. I went in with 178 ginger and then for the little stems that were kind of left over from when I stamped, I went with the crocodile green, that's 126. Now to build this card, I got out my Gina Marie Designs um, stitched circle dies, and I use them in my um, Bristol Smooth cardstock. This is just a little scrap piece I had, and then I also have you can't really tell, but between the cardstock and my die, I have a piece of acetate as well. So I cut my acetate along with my white cardstock because that acetate it doesn't cut with my dies just by itself. It I don't know, I guess it flexes too much or my stamping platform isn't putting enough pressure, not platform, I'm sorry, my um, die cut machine isn't putting enough pressure on the die to cut through the acetate. I'm not quite sure how that's working out. But um, anyways, I took that clear acetate and I heavily used my anti-static powder tool on that. I pretty much opened it up and dumped it on it so it was covered and this is the heat resistant um, acetate this is the hot off the press this works really well I don't get any bending or warping with this acetate and I stamped you are a treasure to me this is from June's stamp kit I believe um, the beautiful flower stamp set and I went ahead and stamped that and then I used my clear window cleaner to make sure I got all of that uh, static powder off of my acetate so it was nice and clean. And then I took my circle that I cut out with my circle die and I cut the bottom part off so it wouldn't overhang on my card. Then I took my acetate and I ran out of my double sided tape. I didn't actually run out of it. I ran out of it in the, the tape gun, my ATG gun. I have a refill for it, but when I was doing this video, I didn't have time. I just used my um, Tombow Multi Mono Liquid Glue for everything, and it works well. It's a very strong holding glue. And I just took some patterned paper. This was just in one of my pattern paper packs. Um, if you want to know what pack it is, I will uh, try and link it down below. I fussy cut it out my flowers, and then I took some double-sided foam tape, and I covered the whole backside of my flowers so I could pop this up. I love popping up my images. 
So anytime I have a chance to do that, I will do that. Then I went ahead and took my circle with the um, acetate. And after looking at this, I wish I would have made this into a shaker card. Just with a little bit of couple sequence right there at the very bottom of You Are a Treasure to Me. Had a little bit of sequence in there. Um, so they had a little bit of play in the center. Would have been super easy to do. I just didn't think of it until after the card was done. I went ahead and took my liquid glue and glued that down. I did take I did take my pencil and make a line where I wanted that to be. And then I just went right above that line so it wouldn't show up on my card. I went ahead and adhered that down, took off the backing for my flowers and pushed that in place. Now, whenever I am using my double-sided phone tape, I don't push it down right off the bat until I know it's in the spot that I like it because that stuff is very sticky and it could just tear your image if you push it down and didn't like the placement of it. So now I'm going in with my Studia Cadia April Crystals. I love these crystals. I might have went overboard with them on this card, but uh, I didn't care. I just wanted to have fun and, and I love these crystals. They're just absolutely beautiful to me. So I just started putting dots everywhere on my card and then I used my jewel picker and started placing those on there. This thing still gives me a little bit of issues. I am still trying to get that Gina K connect clue, but every time I go to put it in my cart, it is out of stock. I am on the list for them to notify me when it's back in stock, but it has not came back in stock on Simon's stamp yet. So I am still patiently waiting for that to come in stock. And I, I'm gonna order that um, stamping ink as well whenever it does come back in stock. So I want to try that ink out since I'm not happy with the Simon Says Stamp ink. Alrighty, so we're almost finished with this card. I'm going to go in with my Micron pen. I might add some dashed lines. I went ahead and fast forward past half of them for you so you didn't have to waste so much time watching me. And I hope I didn't skip past or talk too much about my dogs through the coloring process. Um, it was very simple coloring um, for the flowers. It was just more of just laying the color down and blending it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And um, I'll be doing a giveaway when I hit my 200 subscribers. So look forward to that and I will see you guys next time. Bye.